Welcome to Photoshop Rant. I'm Lee Veris, and I'm here to bring you tips and tricks for Photoshop teachers and students. Today's rant is about the Photoshop UI. Uh, the interface is not talked about all that much, but I think it's very important, especially for new students. Adobe has put a lot of effort into the UI design, and I think it deserves a little more attention. So uh, before I get into all that, I'd like to suggest that you change the resolution of your display. Uh, let me explain. Okay, one of the most annoying things about Photoshop uh, in the Photoshop interface is that it's hard to read, especially for new students. And uh, that's because today's monitors have evolved into higher and higher resolution devices, what with retina displays and four and 5K monitors. Um, and this causes type and other UI elements to be small and more difficult to read. Um, so we're going to look at uh, changing that in the, um, on the computer. We're going to change resolution on your computer. So right now, here I'm, in, uh, uh, I'm on a Macintosh, so I would go to System Preferences. And I'm going to leave it up to those Windows users to figure this out. Uh, but uh, we would go to Displays. And you notice I've changed the resolution to be, instead of the highest resolution, it's now uh, somewhat smaller. I found uh, on my uh, iMac 27-inch display that 16 by 900 is, is a really good uh, resolution for uh, the default Photoshop UI. So we set it for that. And now when I call up Photoshop, um, the display is now rendering the, the Photoshop interface much bigger so the text and all the UI elements are easier to see. Uh, so we're going to talk about the Photoshop interface and I've got a few little pet peeves um, and some suggestions about uh, how you can um, customize the interface to, uh, to work better for, uh, for you in, in your uh, Photoshop activities. So first off, pet peeve, okay, so uh, here's the, the start, you know, sort of default start screen, and it, it, it's useful because we can pull up, uh, we can open and create a new document, open uh, ones that have been recently opened, they show up here. Uh, it's kind of a nice little thing. It's kind of annoying to me um, just because I'm used to the way things were. So you can always change that in the preferences. If we go into the preferences here, uh, you can uncheck show that start workspace when no documents are open. Now, the thing for me um, that's my pet peeve is this dark interface. Nobody ever bothers changing it. I understand younger um, users don't have a problem with this dark interface. Um, but really, I thought we kind of got over this with uh, when we moved away from DOS. A, a while ago, people... Uh, did some testing, and um, they discovered that looking at light letters on a dark field is much more fatiguing for the eye, and it's much less legible. So the first thing I do, and I, I have people do this in my classes, so we go to the interface preference here and check the next lightest gray patch, and that changes the interface now to be a lighter interface, so we have dark letters on a, on a light background, and that is way less fatiguing uh, to stare at for hours on end. And uh, so I think um, you do well to just change that one preference setting. There are a whole host of other preferences. Uh, we're not really going to look at any of those. That's, that's perhaps uh, we can get into another uh, Photoshop rant about preferences. But right now I'm just going to talk about uh, the UI. And um, the UI is really kind of all about how the Photoshop interface is arranged to be most productive. And under the window menu here, we have workspace. And these have uh, various um, kind of UI arrangements pre-cooked. Here's our default one, the, the essentials. And if I select that, you'll notice that uh, now we have the interface arranged with panels and uh, what have you. Um, I'm perhaps more interested in the, uh, in the photography interface, so we'll, we'll set for that. Okay, so you notice how now with the Photoshop interface uh, changing for photography, we have the tool panels on the left edge and 
these panels are all kind of compressed more along the right hand side. Now, one thing that I never see anyone do this, and, and I, it's always kind of puzzled me, but I'm right handed and it always annoys me to reach across the image to get the tools in the toolbar along the left hand edge. So I think the first thing I like to do is just move that tool panel over to the right hand side. And you'll, you'll see if, if I move it over here and I get that vertical blue bar, that locks that tool panel right up against uh, the edge. And so now everything is over on the right hand side, which kind of makes sense for a right handed user. Uh, and um, if you were left handed, I would move everything over on the left hand side. And I, I made a, I saved a, a workspace. If you make any change to the workspace, you can save it by going to new workspace, then uh, typing in a new name and saving it so that you can recall it. And uh, I have I have already saved my tutorials interface like this, and that's made little arrangements here. Uh, anything that you want to close, uh, there's a little the timeline I have open most of the time, so I can close that by just selecting from this. Uh, menu here. So I'm going to close the timeline. Um, if I was left-handed, I'd, I'd move everything over to the left-hand side. So I'd go ahead and I've saved a left-handed version of this. So that is over there like that. Now, for some reason, I can't seem to get the application frame to work with the left-handed interface. Uh, you know, you see here that's still kind of floating. Um, this brings up another issue with the interface. Let me go back to my tutorials interface. Uh, and let's open an image. We'll open up, uh, I'll just open something up here. Um, if you, I, I prefer to use the application frame. That's part of a, a setting whereby the panels all kind of lock to the edge and we have the whole Photoshop interface is now contained inside of one window. So everything stays locked down. And uh, if we call up, say, a curve or something like that, uh, it it's stays in place. We know where everything is. It doesn't move around. Uh, even if I zoom in, I can move the image around like this using the grabber hand. Uh, and if I want the the curves to go away, I can just toggle them on and off like that. If we don't use the application frame, then this is sort of defaults to an old school way uh, of where everything is in a floating window. And we see that a lot. And I'll, I'll, I'll see instructors that have everything floating. And this is sort of like uh, you'll see this sometimes where they, they'll have arrangements of, of uh, panels like this. And everything is kind of floating around and, and you'll see people move stuff around um, if we call up uh, a curve it's usually in a floating window like this and you'll, you'll you'll see videos where people are describing stuff like this and then they're you know then they have to move move the interface around to get it out of the way and then it's overlapping everything and uh, it, it's it's just kind of annoying so um, photo uh, Adobe develop this new way of doing it where it locks everything into place and uh, I find that that uh, works a lot better. Now you notice I've kind of messed up my interface here and you can always rejigger or reset the interface simply by going to Windows Workspace and reset the workspace you have open. So I'm going to reset tutorials. It's going to lock it back into place uh, the way I had it originally designed. All right, let's. Uh, all right, so let me open up this uh, another uh, image here. I've got this composite image that I've been working on, and you can kind of see uh, I've I've masked off um, this face, and I I want to place it against this other background. Okay, so while I'm working on the mask and uh, adjusting things, I see the transparency. So this is a little tip, a little thing that you can do to customize the interface that I think goes a long way to making it much easier. Um, to deal with complex masking chores. And so we're going to go into the preferences here and we're going to change the transparency and gamut preference. 
Okay, so this is the one preference setting I think, uh, again, this never gets talked about, and I see countless videos where, about masking where you see this really annoying and distracting checkerboard pattern that represents transparency. And you can you can certainly change the transparency settings here with a grid size. You know, small is perhaps a little bit nicer. But the one thing that people don't realize that you can change, besides going medium, light, and dark for your grid colors, um, the one thing you can change is the actual colors used for the checkerboard pattern. So what I like to do is I'll click on this white patch here, which represents one of the colors for the checkerboard. And in the color picker, I'm going to make it darker and darker until it almost merges. I mean, some people like to make it merge perfectly, but I just make it so that it's, it's just a little bit lighter than that other square, so it kind of blends together. Now, suddenly, you can see a lot more detail along that hair edge. So compare that to the other one. So there's the kind of annoying bright checkerboard pattern. And... You know, most people don't know, don't even get off the medium size grid. And I look at videos all the time that have, have this annoying checkerboard pattern. But all you really need to do is change that, that color and get the pattern to merge, get it closer together. You can still see that there's a little bit of a pattern there. So you know that that represents transparency. But now the edge is clearly seen. We can see the detail in that edge without having to do anything extra. So that's my tip here, uh, an interface tip that's never uh, talked about. You know, we'll just keep it short and sweet here. Uh, there's other things. Uh, I like to have the info panel up, for instance. I'll probably do another rant about the info panel. And um, OK, one more thing. I almost forgot. There's one more little pet peeve of mine, and uh, that has to do with uh, the little picture-in-picture -picture video that I see very often in uh, instructional videos. Usually it's placed down here in the lower right corner and uh, it's uh, just uh, the instructor uh, speaking to you and uh, you know the problem is that over here it's often gets in the way of, of, of certain things and and it covers up part of the interface so you know sometimes people have very clever ways of getting around that. This is one of my favorite ones where uh, we redo the interface and uh, usually put the navigator and replace the navigator pane with that little talking video with the instructor talking to you, the student. It's so sincere. I don't need to see the instructor. Okay, I want to see the interface, how it's being used, um, and I don't really need to see a, a, a little tiny video of a talking head. So just a pet peeve of mine, you know, don't take offense out there, guys, uh, but really just think about whether that is something that you really need to show just because your screen recording software supports it. Uh, it doesn't always mean that you have to use it. So anyway, um, that's it for me. <laughs> we'll go back to my usual interface here. And... Um, Thank you for watching, and I hope uh, I hope I see you next week in another Photoshop rant. In the meantime, have fun pushing those pixels around. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. You might be interested in more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video. And please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You might also consider following me on Instagram. I have two books in print available on Amazon in Kindle as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure and the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. I also have a very detailed discussion of my backup strategies in my ebook, Quick Before They're Gone, A Photographer's Guide to Backup, available on Amazon and directly from my website. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school under the Education menu at veras.com. Thank you for watching.
Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.